Welcome back. In this video, we're now going to move on to creating an entity. Uh, now, what I mean by creating the entity, because I'm not going to also do the components for the entity, but rather preparing our hash map for adding the components. Uh, let's take a look at what I mean with the whiteboard. So here we have like our locations. If we let's imagine that we've now registered several of these component types that we're going to have, but obviously we don't have any data in those vectors. They're all empty. Well, if I want to register a new entity, that entity is going to be up here. So let's say we have like a player. So we'll have player one. Now, player one is going to be made up a bunch of these components here. Uh, so we need to now expand our uh, vectors. But we don't necessarily know what to put them in them yet. That's going to be part of like the width component that we're going to do in the next video. But here we're going to have to set these up with none. Because they're options, we're going to basically do the equivalent of a null in Rust. Now, Rust doesn't have nulls. Um, it's it's something that uh, I agree with that like languages with nulls and that are strongly typed have this sort of like interesting problem where now you like what happens if you don't have a thing at all? Oh, it'll be null or this other type. And now you have to do null checks all over the place, uh, even if you don't necessarily plan on using it here. It's not that uh, Rust doesn't have the ability to do, you know, have a nothing at all. But because there's no like just generic, it handles nothing and as any type pretty much, you have to now be forced to handle it because you're very you know, upfront. You're telling a compiler, I want this to have the possibility of being nothing to force me to handle the idea of it being nothing. OK, well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to now basically allow us to add in an entity. Now, notice I'm creating like the player name, like the player label here. We don't need to have one here because this is just a database of types. The combination of types is really telling us what it is. So here we're going to now just basically expand everything that we have here and add in a none. So let's come back to our code. So if we take a look at our um, entities here, we see that it is a vector vector of options. So if we want to now, uh, what is this going to be create entity? So let's create a new function for this. Create entity. Um, uh, I'll start with mute entities. entities default uh, and then we're going to register a component we can register two components for this and that should be fine so let's let's create another component here we'll have like a struct we have health um, let's do maybe uh, speed uh, but this could also be maybe a u32 Uh, we're going to do an entities dot register components for health entities dot register components for speed. OK, great. Now I want to now um, run this create entity, which at that point, I want everything to be all of these like components to be have um, the first item in them, which is going to be a none, but at least one item in them. So that way, we can make sure that every time they were creating entities, if we don't give them some component, it's gonna be the same size, like the vectors are always going to be the same size. So we're going to do a entities dot uh, create entity. I don't think we need to add anything in here like that. I think we're just going to run the create entity function here. And then we should build a test 
each of these two to make sure their length is one um, and that they're uh, they contain a nut. I think that's all we need to like uh, check for here. So uh, let's do um, let's grab we're going to grab health and speed out that health it's equal to entities dot uh, components I'm gonna get it's gonna be the type ID uh, type ID of health. Um, okay so that's gonna give us that we can unwrap you that's gonna give us this vector of an option of that okay that uh and then we're gonna have speed it's really gonna be exactly the same except our type id is now gonna be speed okay so now we have these two vectors here i want them both to have the same length which should be one, right? So we want um, uh, we want to assert. We can just do a normal assert here. So assert um, health dot length is equal to uh, speed dot length. Um, and let's just make sure that they're also one, right? So and no, we'll just do health.length again uh, is equal to one. Um, okay, so that's one assert. The other assert is I want to make sure that the first item in this is a... Um, uh, the first item in this is a none. That, that's it. So we're going to do assert equal. Um, and actually, I don't have to do assert equal. I'm gonna do another one of these, which is gonna be uh, health dot um, health of position zero is none, and we can do the exact same thing for the other one too. So this is gonna be the speed of position zero is none. So two assertions here. I know that some people aren't really happy with like multiple assertions in a single test. But this will allow us to like to verify that everything that we want to do here is correct. All right, so it's yelling at us that we need to create this create entity function uh, first. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Create entity. Um, this is going to have a mutable self. Um, but then we notice we're not passing anything in, so I don't need anything else in here. And we're not necessarily returning anything yet. Um, that that may come in the future. In fact, we know that we're going to have to have that because we're using this dot here. So we'll we'll deal with that when we get to you know in the next video. Uh, up until then, we're going to stay here. Uh, okay. So with this create entity, now you're you're all happy, and these these um. There's no compile errors yet, but if I run this test, we're going to get a failure because um, the health, the, the length, while well, this is the same, um, the same length, they're all length zero, the length is not equal to one. So we need to fix that. Uh, well, the easiest way to fix that is we're going to loop through all of the components and just insert you know, a none into it. We're going to do a uh, self dot components. Um, we can get an iter for this an iter mute. Uh, once we get an iter mute, we can now uh, do a for each. Um, and I think a for each is going to be fine here because I don't want to return a new thing. I want to mutate what we have inside of here. So for each. Now we're going to have a function inside of here. Um, closures in Rust are denoted by these two um, two vertical bars, and that the um, the variables that are coming in is what we're you know what we're going to take in here. So 
in here for four each what are you taking you're not telling me it's taken like a oh so if i just type something um rust analyzer starts telling me what the types that we expect to be in here i noticed this is a tuple here uh and we have the type id and we have we have this so i want a tuple to just extract out to destructure and we're gonna have the key and we're gonna have the value which is gonna be the component um and then inside of here i just want to push something into the components so we're gonna do components dot push and none and that's it one line now this key we're not going to use so i'm just going to go ahead and give it an underscore in front of it so that way it's not going to yell at me that i'm not using it uh, and with that let's come back down here and test this again hey and now we have it passing so we are successfully uh creating a uh components and they have stuff in it i'm going to remove this debug down to the bottom here so we can see what that looks like when i run this now we see that we have our we have the two components with type ids for the keys and nuns for the value in the first spot because there's only one we've only done the create one component so we only need one uh column of cells really i'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this debug and uh that's gonna be it for this video in the next one we're gonna do the with component which is going to basically Finish the ability to create entities, at least, you know, insert entities into the ECS. I'll see you then. Bye.